Hello everybody, my name is Christopher Lovejoy. I'm a junior doctor and a clinical data scientist based in London. And today we're gonna to talk about how AI can be used to analyze chest X-rays. Now artificial intelligence is a very broad term. The particular type of artificial intelligence that we're interested in today is called the convolutional neural network, which is sometimes shortened to CNN. This is a particular type of neural network which is used for analyzing images. Any AI innovation that you've heard of will almost certainly involve CNNs or convolutional neural networks at some point, whether that's self-driving cars or Amazon automatic super market or the many potential applications in medical imaging. I'm not going to give a detailed explanation of how CNNs work in this video, but I'm going to give a broad overview of the ways in which it works and how that can be used to analyze chest x-rays. So a convolutional neural network is a type of neural network. So what is a neural network? Neural networks were initially inspired by the brain after we realized that the structure of the brain involved lots of neurons communicating with other neurons. And similarly, in the neural networks that we talk about in AI, there are many points, which in machine learning we call nodes, and they communicate with many other points. And there's many, many connections in between these. But the analogy with the human brain actually breaks down when we start looking at some of the specific variations, such as convolutional neural networks. And another type, which I won't talk about today, Day, but that's recurrent neural network or RNNs. So the way that a CNN works is that initially you have to train it. And the way that you train it is you feed in lots and lots of images of a particular class or category. So in the context of analyzing chest x-rays, these can be things like pneumonia, nodules in the lung, emphysema, other pathologies, or also the category of being normal. And note that some images can have more than one class. For example, pneumonia could be present as well as emphysema and a nodule in the lung. After being given a large number of images with all these associated categories, the algorithm learns what features to look for to distinguish between one category or another. For example, it will learn that an area of haziness, which we call consolidation on the chest x-ray, is suggestive of pneumonia. And therefore, when it's given a new image, it will be able to recognize that consolidation and say that this probably has pneumonia. And likewise, it might recognize an area of whiteness or what we call opacity and identify that as being a lung nodule. Then when you present it a new chest x-ray that it hasn't seen the category for, it will identify that there's a lung nodule in that x-ray. So this is pretty cool. We can train a neural network to recognize things that we would consider to require human intelligence, such as the presence of pneumonia or emphysema on a chest x-ray. However, the next question is, is it accurate enough to be useful? So initially, there were several research groups that tried to use CNNs to detect specific problems on chest x-rays. For example, a few groups looked at trying to detect tuberculosis or TB, uh, which is a bad bacterial infection, and other people tried to look at pulmonary nodules. And these research groups showed good accuracy in these models. More recently, groups have tried to use much larger databases of chest x-rays to detect multiple different pathologies. For example, there was a group from Stanford University who used 112,000 chest x-rays, which had 14 different categories of disease. And they found pretty reasonable accuracy across these 14 categories with some variation in between them. So what does this mean? Are we going to replace doctors with AI? Are radiologists soon going to be out of a job? The short answer in my opinion is no, but check out another video of mine to see a discussion of why I think that's the case. So that's everything for today. I hope you enjoyed watching. Any other questions you'd like me to consider, leave a comment in the description below. Please like, subscribe and consider sharing this video with anyone else who you think might find it interesting and I'll see you in the next video.